Yes. So we're going to go from the future of work to the future of microservices. Um, really excited to introduce Windmill. Yeah. Hey. All right. Everyone can hear me? Hi. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Cool. Hey, uh, I'm Dan. I'm Han. Uh, and we work on Tilt, and we're going to tell you how to uh, fix microservice development and I guess why it's broken. Uh, so, some context. We're toolsmiths. Uh, I'm Dan. I, I met my co-founder when we were working at Google, and we've built a, a bunch of tools. We really pride ourselves in tools both for developers, and I listed some up there, and I trust you can uh, read those, but also tools for consumers like uh, Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Forms. Uh, Nick went off and wrote the editor on Medium if you've ever uh, been a thought leader. And we kind of realized, hey, we're building these experiences that are cool. You know, no one switched from Excel to Google Sheets because it's more powerful. If you're really doing some like big finance portfolio assessment, you still want Excel, but you're able to do new things because the workflows are, are different when you have these online connected experiences. And so we asked ourselves, hey, we're building these, but why don't we get them? Because the experience of software development, uh, this is an XKCD, uh, is a lot of waiting, right? You're just really wondering. And so as a company, we're trying to really focus on what's the piece of feedback that as a developer would make you say, aha, or like, huh, or even that can't possibly happen, just something that moves you forward. And there are a lot of different things it can be, not just what a computer's telling you, but how to connect you with others. And we think that if you can get this, what's the piece of feedback and see it automatically, we think of that experience as live development and the business goal it really lets you achieve is that you have less time from when you accept a bug or check out a branch until you actually have your pull request ready. And this has changed a bunch in the past five to 10 years and is happening now, the rise of microservices. Uh, you used to have a monolith where your app was one executable, but now it's a whole bunch. And if you've heard terms like distributed systems or Kubernetes, containers, Docker, that's all part of this, this wave. And moving to microservices, there's a whole bunch of great things. You can deploy things independently. Most of them are on the ops side. And ops has new tools like uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, observability that enable this move. But on the development side, it actually kind of makes the process of development worse because you're still using the existing tools that were built for monoliths, for looking at one thing at a time. And so it's like trying to like drive 100 cars at once. That's just not what it, thank you, um, what, <laughs> what the interface was set up for. And so that's why we're building Tilt to let you update and understand your microservice app. So. All right, we're gonna show you a demo, fingers crossed. So how you get started is that you tell Tilt about your app, whether it's a fairly simple app, like the one that I'm about to show you now, or whether it's a significantly more idiosyncratic and complex app, like those of the partners that we work with. So um, once you tell Tilt via a configuration file about your app, you can see this interface where you get an overview of everything that is happening in your file system, in your Kubernetes cluster, and what Tilt is doing to keep those in sync. So on one side, you see a list of literally, literally all of the microservices that you've defined. And let's just take a look um, at the front end so you get, get a sense of what this app is. Um, so each of these little widgets here represents, it, it is a different microservice. It's very simple, but each of these, you know, we got your JavaScript app, Python app, your Go app. Um, and let's, let's simulate, you know, a, just a moment in the day of your regular uh, engineer and make a change to, to one of these services. Uh, so snack, right? Uh, I need some help here. Can, can, can I get a, get a snack, like Doritos? All right, nice. All right, Doritos is the new snack. Um, we can change the code, Tilt immediately sees that you've changed the file and 
syncs it right up, um, and you can check out the uh, preview that is running in your cluster and see, oh, <laughs> well, it's container creating Doritos. And uh, let us, you know, sometimes, uh, more often than not, you're in kind of in an error state than in a state that, you know, immediately works when you're writing code. So, you know, let's say you add a couple of other snacks, and uh, while in your process of doing that, oops, uh, there's an error that occurred. Uh, looks like uh, if you take a look at the overview, you can see there's an error. You can see that the error is associated with snack. Take a look. Oof, looks like we got a little bit of a syntax error here. Now, some people say, like, well, my IDE can see if there's a syntax error, but, you know, we can also um, show you when there's errors after your app has been built and deployed and is, a, a, like, a runtime error. So let's say it has, has trouble, um, it runs into something during startup, and, uh, you know, tilt, again, it, like, automatically listens for changes in your file system and uh, deploys for you to your, to your development cluster, and then you can see that, you know, there's an issue here and fix it. You know, what our aim is, is instead of playing 20 questions with KubaCuddle, which is the command line tool that comes with Kubernetes, you can just have this interface where you have a bird's eye view of your entire system and zoom in on issues as they occur while you're iterating, which is the, the fastest and most immediate way to address those issues. So just to give you a sense of the things that we really care about in building this tool. It's, there's a lot of tools out there actually that help with um, uh, microservices development insofar as it like, keeps things updated, you know, because if you have a lot of, you know, you got the 100 cars driving at the same time, but that's just the update side. But we also care about the side where you understand what's happening in your system. That's why we're investing in um, an interface that gives you that overview. So, we really believe that if you use Kubernetes for production, you should be using Tilt um, for development. And you know, we have this tool is open source and it is free, so it's available. Um, oh, actually, I just realized I'm standing right in front of the URL <laughs> this whole time. So uh, you can check it out. It's on GitHub. Um, and the thing that we are working on right now, well, what I just kind of showed you, we sort of think of that as a single player mode. That's like a single engineer working on there and iterating on their code. But um, what is particularly powerful it, that, that we think is this wonderful next step is instead of these individual silos of everybody's development environment where there's these idiosyncratic issues that can happen on your own machine and are hard to reproduce on somebody else's machine, what if that information can be shared among a team? So. Uh, and especially in the context of if, you, if your team has, has adopted Kubernetes in production, things can get very complex very quickly. And we've heard from customers that suddenly the, their Slack gets very, very uh, interruptive and, and kind of bad. Hey, Han, uh, <laughs> is the shopping cart service broken for you? Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what are you getting on your machine? Oh, here's two lines of output. Oh, um, uh, I actually can't tell. Can you, like, that's not that one. Can you run this command? And then it just kind of goes back and forth like that until you realize that it's two people acting like, you know, an interactive terminal with each other. So the, the first um, one thing that we would just wanted to quickly show you that we're really excited about to help get... Um, you know, useful troubleshooting and help from your colleagues more quickly is um, the snapshot feature. So you go into Tilt and you can generate this uh, link. Now, mind you, when I was showing you um, the interface, that is local. It's running on your individual machine. But this is just, you know, a link that anybody who has this link can take a look. Um, let's, let's, go, let's go to, let's say, you know, you shared it on Slack, you shared it um, on maybe Twitter, you know, on a message. Um, to your team. I'm actually just, yeah, posting that. So you can, you all can see it actually. Uh, and you go to that URL, um, again, this is on the cloud, it's not local anymore, and you can see an interactive view of exactly that moment in time on a particular person's local machine. So instead of playing, you know, 20 questions with your colleague, um, you can send them this state that they can explore. And so yeah, we call that snapshots. And if you actually go to my Twitter feed at D Bentley, you can click on it too from your phone. We haven't optimized with phones, so excuse if it's crowded. Thanks for bearing with us. And uh, on your laptop, you can actually dig in and explore. It's, uh, that's alpha, so talk to us for access. But we're really excited about this feature because we think it both combines 
the t tilt, which is single player on your laptop, with this SAS, which is for your team and is running in the cloud, and I think really gets at, hey, you could maybe imagine your developer experience team building some of this experience, but we think that because we're a company, because this is for us a profit center, not a cost center, we're really able to invest in making it a delightful experience, not just a passable one. So yeah, that's our presentation, thanks. So the question is about, hey, if the point of cloud is, uh, is that production is stable, self-contained, self why do I do this that introduces chaos? And I think the answer is because, or the answer is you wouldn't. This isn't for your production. This is for taking your development that today you're doing in your IDE, that you're doing just with unit tests, and being able to make that any person on the team, even on their first day, can just type tilt up and then get a replica of your whole app without having to understand it uses that microservice and that language. Yeah, you can find that out later, but it's as simple as using uh, make or Maven or Gradle to like bring up your app even now that it's a microservice app, not just one binary. For devs only. For yep. devs only. Yeah, if you're, pro sorry, yeah, if you're an ops person, you have to earmuffs. <laughs> No, it's just a testament to how. No. Yeah, so this is in the cloud space. Naturally, you're going to have all the cloud providers providing something similar to this, right? How does this differentiate? Great. The question is naturally, you're going to have all of the cloud providers uh, doing something similar. How does this differentiate? So, yeah, Google has a tool called Scaffold, Microsoft has a tool called Draft. They exist as, I'd say, billboards. Right, like th it's worth them investing a little amount of time to like check the box when you're comparing. They're cloud companies offering a developer tool, whereas we're really a developer experience team that's starting with cloud because cloud is where the most pain is. But the same way that they aren't actually going to invest in full IDEs, we think that like the full workflows, they're really only interested in how do you be a conduit to the cloud they're not actually, and I can talk more over various and sundry beverages about why they're unable to just actually do that developer workflow because that's not what they're getting paid for. And so they're, they're, they're incentivized to do just enough to like lead you on, but not enough to actually be fantastic. And we're, I'm, I at least am fanatical about this. It's true. <laughs> Sure. What are the specific activities and technologies required in order to get this running for a development organization? The question is, what are the specific uh, activities and um, setups to, uh, I thought, uh, sorry, I'm having some trouble just with uh, full screen mode. Great. So if, um, if you go to tilt.dev and go to the docs page, you can see that if you have your Kubernetes configuration, sorry, I can increase wabam, the zoom in, and you have your Docker files, that's, what, that's the description of your app that Tilt needs to then orchestrate not just what's running in the cluster, but actually from your file system to the cluster and back with the problems. And if you, so it's trivial for simple apps. We know real teams have weird things and we, handle those two, and we have lots of other escape hatches because we want to work for real projects, not hello world projects. And we can talk 
more at length, yeah, after. Is there a way to have something like mixed environment where you can have some services running locally and some services to even them like, Kubernetes in and then communicate with them so that you don't have to run the whole bunch of the services in the local machine? Yeah, the question is, um, can you mix what's running locally with what's running in a cluster? And uh, there are a couple reasons you might want that. One is you don't want to run so much stuff on your local laptop. For that, the answer is actually just run everything in a cluster. And some of the optimizations we didn't have time to show actually let us do updates in the cluster so that you can, from when you save until when new cl codes running in the cluster be a second or two, as fast as running locally. Another is wanting to have a mix of your dev with like the prod and there are ways you can do that in the tilt file, it's actually code, so you can pick and choose what you want to get from where. Yeah, we can talk, yeah, we should talk. <laughs> <laughs> Time for one more before the panel. <laughs> Rob. How do you have like security and access controls particularly with the sharing of the links? How do you do security and access controls particularly with the sharing of the links? So. There's Tilt, which runs uh, on your laptop, talks to your cluster, whether it's uh, Docker or MicroKates on your laptop or your cloud cluster as you. So it's just using your permissions. For the sharing of the links, uh, right now they're global. You might be able to imagine that one of the things we would like to quickly follow up on is having uh, ACLs that like reflect, say, your GitHub repo so that they're ACLed in the same way. Uh, if that's a concern, we would love example use cases and we should definitely talk uh, tilt.dev, which is, oh yeah, on Han, um, or no, yeah, yeah. All righty, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.